What's going on, guys? My name's Corey Kamori, and welcome to Lyric Breakdowns here on the Breakdown Channel. And in today's video, we're going to be discussing Hypnotize by System of a Down. Released in 2005 off of the Hypnotize album, Hypnotize the song is one that's really dense, one that can be interpreted in so many different ways. And I think it's really interesting that a lot of the topics that are discussed in this song are still relevant uh, to today. Um, it's no secret that this song was written during the George W. Bush era, uh, and a lot of the things that were taking place then are still taking place now, so it makes sense why uh, this song and its message is still relevant. But again, it's one that touches upon subjects such as uh, protesting, the realities of protesting, and the realities of making change in your community and the world as a whole. It touches upon propaganda, the way propaganda is created and distributed out to the masses. And it also just touches upon, you know, are you going to be a part of the problem or are you going to be a part of the solution in the community, in the world, and actually see through the change that you want to see happen in the world? But since the song is so dense, let's jump right into it. We begin the song with the words. Why don't you ask the kids at Tiananmen Square? Was fashion the reason why they were there? They disguise it, hypnotize it, television made you buy it. I'm just sitting in my car and waiting for my. All right, so where to begin? Why don't you ask the kids at Tiananmen Square? Was fashion the reason why they were there? So it's widely known that uh, the protests that took place in Tiananmen Square were to combat the effects of communism in China. And it was an awful display of brutality uh, where the government went and just wiped out these protesters. And there's, and there's that famous picture of the man standing in front of the tank as it's about to basically run him over. This section of the song for me talks about protest culture and not necessarily culture in that, you know, people that are really going forth and fighting for change in their community. I'm talking more about people that jump on the bandwagon when it comes to protesting and fighting for something. You know, they're, these are people that one minute, at least in today's society, they'll be walking around taking pictures of, look at me, I'm at this rally, look at me, I'm doing this stuff, I'm making changes, yada, 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 and then literally the next day, they're not continuing that fight. They just go back to their everyday existence, and things go back to the status quo. The reality is, is that when you're fighting for change in your community, in the world, things are going to be difficult. It's going to be a long process. It's going to be frustrating, and it's not all about the glory. This right here really talks about, for me, this idea of, look, do you think that these people in Tiananmen Square were doing this because they thought it was fun, because they thought it was fashionable, because they thought it was cool to go and fight against the government? No, they were being oppressed and they wanted to fight for their rights. So I think that this section right here, for me, is easily the most relevant to today because we see things like this happen all the time. We see people jump on the bandwagon when it comes to certain causes and you know they never see them through. It's good that sometimes when people become a part of rallies like these that it's kind of like a gateway drug and eventually they do get involved and they really start making changes in the community. You know, but a lot of times people go about it in a way where they're just trying to get attention and being like, look at how good a person I am. Instead of walking a walk, you know, these guys are just talking the talk. So the next section, they disguise it, they hypnotize it, television made you buy it. That's pretty straightforward. Obviously, it's talking about the way that the media is manipulated. It's talking about um, what is called gatekeeping and how a lot of times, especially when this uh, song was released, a lot of times everything were controlled by the major media companies and the major news outlets that would put out information that they felt was appropriate and that they felt was going to get the views that they were looking for. Now, things have changed a little bit nowadays, but it's also very similar. Uh, you, you definitely have a lot of clickbait culture now. You have a whole lot of uh, fake news and misinformation that's put out there. You have a lot of things that are just trying to manipulate and pull people in so many different directions. And if anything else, I think it's more difficult nowadays to tell what's real and what's not real than it was in 2005. But again, I think this section is pretty simple. It's just talking about how those who are in control, those who have power, have the ability to filter and control what it is that you see and therefore control what it is you think and in some cases believe. Now we get to that chorus or this is kind of like a, 
a teaser chorus where it talks about, I'm just sitting in my car waiting for my. I really like how this section, you know, ends on a cliffhanger of like, waiting for my what? Waiting for my, my dog, my cat, my friend. What it's painting is the populace taking in information, taking in what it is that they're seeing, what is being reported, and sitting on the edge of their seat and going, oh, I wonder what's gonna happen. Oh, I just, I need to sit here and I need to, I need to be uh, polite and in control and I need to listen to whatever it is they're telling me because you know, they're, they're not gonna lead me astray. Now, I'm not one of those people that is saying like, all news outlets are bad and you know, they're all trying to manipulate you. Absolutely not, there are great news outlets out there. There are great journalists that are putting things out there. I think NPR, for instance, is a great source of information. You know, and I'm not somebody that buys into all of these uh, web-based means of gaining access to information like what's going on in politics, what's going on in the environment, what's going on, you know, around the world. You know, I think you have to be very careful what you get involved with when it comes to news and how you consume it. Uh, but this is really interesting because, again, this is really painting a picture of the time frame when uh, this song was created. You know, we were sitting around and we were waiting to hear about the news about, you know, what had happened in Iraq? What's going on? Did we catch Osama bin Laden yet? You know, always sitting on the edge of our seat waiting and seeing what was going to happen next. Uh, so that's what I think this section is about. But let's move on to, into the next verse. She's scared that I will take her away from there. Dreams and her country left with no one there. Mesmerized, the simple-minded. Propaganda leaves us blinded. This section right here really seems to be an extension of that pre-chorus or that teaser chorus. For me, it really seems to be talking about this idea that if we were to take control or if a populace was able to take control of their country, become a part of the political process, then those that are trying to manipulate that populace, their power would be stripped away from them. They would become powerless and they fear that more than anything else. They would be left alone, like that line says, you know, dreams enter country left with no one there. They would essentially be ostracized from this society. And it's something that those with power desperately do not want to happen. The line mesmerized the simple-minded, you know, propaganda leaves us blinded. Again, I think it's just reiterating what that first section was talking about and how, you know, you know, in order to get things done, a lot of the people in power are going to do whatever they can to manipulate folks so that they can maintain that power and control. And then we get to the chorus. I'm just sitting in my car and waiting for my girl. I absolutely love this chorus. Um, really what this chorus is talking about, it's really describing that we as a country, we as a people are just sitting back and we're hoping that things change but we're not actually being a part of the process of change and really putting our money where our mouth is. We're just sitting back, we're consuming things, and we're hoping that things get better along the way. But unfortunately, that's not how change occurs. A lot of times we have to get down and dirty and we have to roll up our sleeves, as cheesy as that sounds, and we have to get down to business and we actually have to be a part of the process of change, whether it's from a political perspective, uh, a social, economic perspective. There's so many aspects in our society that we can get involved in and become a part of the process that is change, positive change for everyone, so that everyone in our society can thrive. And really what I think this section is talking about is that you know, back in 2005 and still today, we're really not becoming a part of the process of change. We're just sitting back and we're hoping things change for the better. The other thing I love about this course is how simple it is. It's a course that everybody can and does sing along to. I know when my band covered this song, you know, we had a bunch of people in the back just singing along with us. It's a song that, you know, whether you're in a small dive bar or an arena, everybody is gonna start singing along to this section of the song. And I think that's why this chorus is incredibly inspiring. It really shows that it's not that difficult for us to get together. We can put aside our differences and we can come together and make change. We can come together and make sure that all people have an opportunity to have a good life. But what do you guys think? Did I leave anything out? Do you have anything else to add to this discussion? Please comment below, let me know. As always, I've been Corey Kimori. Thank you so much, and I'll see you guys next time. No!